everyone. Today I wanted to show you how to set up NFS shares on your Synology NAS. Now you're wondering why why would you want to do that? Yeah, you already have SMB shares set up or or Mac shares. Well, NFS shares use about 20% less CPU usage. And that doesn't matter for your PC or for your Macintosh. They probably have more than enough power to where you're not going to see any kind of performance issue. But I am just bought a Raspberry Pi and I loaded it with XBMC and in order to get 1080p files to play really well I've, I've had to set up an NFS share. So I just wanted to show you how because I couldn't really find any good YouTube videos out there. First thing we want to do is log into your disk station and go ahead and go to your control panel. And once you're in your control panel go to the terminal under network services and in here you just want to enable SSH service. Go ahead and hit apply. Mine's already enabled so I'm gonna just back out of here. Then go to file sharing and privileges. You're gonna see WinMac NFS Go ahead and click on that. Go over to NFS service tab and go ahead and enable NFS and again apply. Now, now we can go and decide which folder we're going to share over NFS. So go to the under file sharing and privileges, go to the shared folder. And in here you're going to want to pick which which folder you have your say your videos in. Uh, or your TV shows. Today I'm just going to do my music folder. So you want to highlight the shared folder you'd like to share on NFS and then go up to the privileges drop down menu here and scroll down to NFS privileges and select that. Now in the, you're going to get this uh, new window where we're going to create privileges of the music folder. So go ahead and click the create button and right here where it says host name or IP address we want to just go ahead and put in an asterisk in here. Now if you want you can have it set up to be read only or read and write. I'd like both read and write. And as far as the no mapping you can just leave that set at no mapping. Enable asynchronous should have a check mark by it and go ahead and say OK. Now you've just created an export and that's showing up here in this window. Now real quick I guess I should show you that if if you wanted only one machine or one IP address to connect to this share you could put that in here and just put in whatever IP. Uh, the wildcard or the asterisk that means that any any machine on this network or on my home network can connect to this share and that's fine with me. So once you're done there you'll see the mount path down here. You can go ahead and click OK. So now we pretty much have that set up we're gonna go and use a program called PuTTY to tell that in to the NAS. Okay, now that we set up our NFS share, we're we're going to have to log in or telnet in to our disk station and make a few edits. So, you're going to need this program called PuTTY. It's free and uh, it's a pretty small app. So, go ahead and download this. I'll put a link in the show notes for you. Once you down finish downloading, you'll have an icon that looks like this, putty.exe. Go ahead and double click on that, run it, and first field that you're going to want to put anything in here is your host name, and that's going to be the IP address of your Synology disk station. Uh, port 22 is the default, and SSH should already be selected. Go down and click open. Now you're going to get a window that pops up that looks a lot like command prompt. So go ahead, 
here we just have to log in as root r o o t all lowercase and then type in the password for your administrator and once you successfully logged in you're gonna see that the command prompt changes to the name of your disk station and mine's currently just called disk station now our first command that we're going to enter here I have it I have it copied and pasted so all you do to paste in putty is right click and it will paste anything that you have in your in your clipboard now this command will show us the NFS export that we created early earlier and if you made more than one it'll show it'll display all of them so go ahead and hit enter I'll make this a little bigger so the one that I created earlier volume one music you can see if you scroll over you can see that this one says insecure locks and what we need to do is we need to take out the locks part so in order to do that we're going to use a program called Vi forward slash etc forward slash export plural export sorry and if you haven't used Vi before what you're going to have to do here is you want to press insert on your keyboard that key that nobody uses and once you do that you'll be able to move your cursor around and we're just going to scroll over and edit where it says insecure locks in between these commas we want to take out the locks part and just have it set up to be insecure now once you've done that you can go ahead and press escape and then you just want to type colon X and this will save and exit for you and we're right back at the command prompt and we have one more one more thing to do here now once you're here you're gonna want to type EXPOR TFS TAC or dash RA and this all this does is make our settings that we just created active and it'll bring you right back to the command prompt there now every now the NFS configuration that we created is all complete all you have to do to back out of here is type exit and that will close putty and I'm gonna show you how to set it up in XBMC just to just so you can see what we created now that I've created my NFS share I can go ahead and add it to XBMC which was my main goal and to do that you come in here and I already have XBMC running this is 12.0 uh, the latest version running on my PC go ahead and go to files add a source click on the browse network file system or NFS like that it's going to take a little bit my IP address and here you can see volume 1 forward slash music and that's the one that I created so we'll go ahead and double click on that and say OK and here you can rename your folder whatever if you made one for TV shows or video say OK and now you should be able to view all the files that were in that folder or that share and also you can go ahead and scan item to library and in my next video I'm gonna show you guys how to create a centralized library for XBMC and some of the advantages of that is that you'll be able to stop a movie or a TV show on one device and then you can continue watching it on another one say in another room obviously or something 
which is nice. It, it'll store that information on your Synology NAS. Before it was normally stored on the device itself. So if you had more, more than one device, it wouldn't know what you were watching in one room versus the other room. And the other part is that you won't have to, right now I'm, I'm scanning all this into the library. And once you do this, when you have a centralized library, it, you only have to do it once. Whereas if you have four XBMC boxes, you'd have to do it for each one which on the Raspberry Pi can take you know a few hours depending on your how large your library is of TV shows music and movies if it's really large it can take a long time on a slow CPU machine so I do this on my PC that has more than enough power to to do it quick and then I don't have to go through the hassle on the on the Raspberry Pi all right well that's pretty much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks for watching.